Australia's got crocs the size of small cars, kangaroos that can outbox you, and birds that'll dive bomb your head just for walking past their tree. But you know what it doesn't have? Vultures. Not a single one. And that's actually super weird, because if there's one place that looks built for vultures, it's Australia. Endless open land, brutal sunshine, and more roadkill than you'd want to count. Perfect conditions for a bald-headed scavenger to just soar around and feast all day. So why are there no vultures in Australia? To understand why it's strange that Australia doesn't have vultures, you first need to know just how good vultures are at what they do. They're not just birds that eat dead animals, they're highly specialized in ways no other scavenger can really match. There are two families of vultures. The Old World vultures live across Africa, Europe, and Asia. The New World vultures are found in the Americas. And here's the wild part. The two groups aren't even closely related. They evolved the same lifestyle completely separately. That's convergent evolution at its finest. It's like nature tried two different recipes and still ended up with the same bird. Bald head, hooked beak, huge wings, stomach made of acid. Now, what makes them so special? Well, for one, efficiency. A single group of vultures can strip a zebra carcass down to the bone in under an hour. Other scavengers might fight over scraps or leave half of it behind, but vultures are like a professional cleaning crew. They don't waste anything. Then there's disease control. Most animals get sick or even die from eating rotting meat full of bacteria. Vultures don't just survive it, they neutralize it. Their stomach acid is so corrosive it kills deadly pathogens like anthrax, rabies, and botulism. In ecosystems without vultures, disease spreads faster from rotting carcasses. In places with them, the air's cleaner, the water's safer, and fewer predators or livestock end up poisoned by bad meat. And don't forget their flight. Vultures can soar for hours without flapping, riding thermal currents to cover hundreds of kilometers in a single day. That makes them incredibly fast at finding food. In Africa and India, vultures often beat hyenas and jackals to a carcass simply because they can spot it first from miles away. Australia might look perfect for vultures, but they were never there to begin with. The reason isn't predators keeping them out or a lack of food. It's pure timing and geography. Australia split away from Antarctica around 45 million years ago. By the time vultures evolved in the rest of the world, the continent had already drifted north and was surrounded by ocean on all sides. Old world vultures, the ones in Africa and Asia, evolved later within the hawk and eagle family. New world vultures popped up in the Americas separately. Neither group existed back when Australia was still connected to anything else. And once the ocean barriers formed, the window was closed. Now, you might think they could have crossed over from Asia at some point, but that's where geography throws another curveball. Between Southeast Asia and Australia lies a region called Wallacea, a patchwork of islands split by deep water channels. Those channels never fully dried out, even during the Ice Ages. That invisible boundary, known as the Wallace Line, has stopped countless species from reaching Australia. Tigers, deer, monkeys, they never made it past, and vultures were stuck on the wrong side too. Even if a vulture did try to cross, it would be a near-impossible journey. These birds are built to soar on rising columns of hot air over land. That's why they can glide for hours without flapping, but over the open ocean, there are no strong thermals. Without lift, they'd be forced to flap non-stop, and a heavy bird with huge wings burns out fast. Ocean winds work for albatrosses and frigate birds, but vultures simply aren't designed for that. And here's another piece of the puzzle. Colonization takes more than just a single bird making it across. You need a whole group to arrive, find enough food, and successfully breed. The islands between Asia and Australia don't provide the steady supply of large carcasses vultures need. Even if one bird made it, it wouldn't survive long enough to start a population. So, if vultures never made it, who's doing the dirty work? Because, let's be real, something has to deal with all the dead kangaroos and cattle under that burning Australian sun. And the answer is, Australia doesn't rely on one specialist like vultures. Instead, it's a team effort, with several animals sharing the load. At the top of the list is the wedge-tailed eagle. These birds are massive, the largest raptors in Australia, with wingspans over two and a half meters. They're powerful hunters, but they're also serious scavengers. 
If there's roadkill on a country highway, chances are you'll see a wedgie on it, wings spread, daring cars to swerve around. They're so dominant that other scavengers often wait until the eagles are done before moving in. In a way, they've taken the vultures' roles in the skies. Then you've got the crows and ravens. They might not look impressive, but they're clever, social, and everywhere. In the absence of vultures, they mob carcasses in big groups, tearing pieces off and calling others to join. They're not fast cleaners like vultures, but their numbers and brains make up for it. Think of them as the opportunists, grabbing whatever they can whenever they can. On the ground, one of the most underrated players is the goanna, Australia's big monitor lizards. Some species, like the parenti, can grow over two meters long. These reptiles aren't picky at all. If it's meat, fresh or rotten, they'll eat it. They're slow compared to birds, but with their strong jaws and bacteria-resistant guts, they can tear into carcasses and handle things other scavengers might leave behind. Basically, the lizard version of a garbage truck. And then there are the dingoes. They're relative newcomers, only arriving a few thousand years ago with humans. But they quickly slotted themselves into the scavenger role too. Dingoes are hunters first, but like most canids, they'll happily scavenge when the opportunity shows up. A dead kangaroo on the side of the road is free food, and dingoes aren't about to turn that down. So instead of a single specialist cleaning up, Australia runs on a patchwork system. Eagles rip in first, crows swarm in next, goannas lumber along to take their share, and dingoes scavenge whatever they find. None of them are as perfectly adapted as vultures, but together they keep the cycle going. All right, let's play with the idea. If humans dropped a group of vultures into Australia tomorrow, how would things go? The biggest immediate impact would be efficiency. Vultures can tear through a carcass in a fraction of the time it takes eagles, crows, or goannas. That means less rotting meat, fewer blowflies, and feral dogs crowding around roadkill, and fewer chances for diseases to spread. In that sense, they'd make things cleaner, safer, and arguably healthier. Farmers might even appreciate it if their cattle losses vanished faster. But wedge-tailed eagles would not take this lying down. Right now, they own the scavenger throne in Australia. If vultures arrived, suddenly you've got two huge birds competing over the same resource. And vultures don't just politely wait their turn. In Africa, they muscle lions and hyenas off kills by sheer numbers. Goannas and dingoes depend on leftovers. If vultures strip a carcass clean in an hour, what's left for them? Dingoes might have to hunt more often, pushing harder on kangaroo populations or small mammals. Goannas might lose an easy seasonal food source and be forced to shift diets. The ripple effect could reach animals you wouldn't expect just because carcasses disappear too quickly. Not all vultures are the same. Old world vultures, like the white-backed or griffin, are communal feeders. They overwhelm a carcass in groups. New world vultures, like turkey vultures, are solitary or small group feeders and are incredible at finding food through smell. The type introduced would matter. A griffin vulture invasion could push out eagles by sheer force of numbers, while turkey vultures might coexist more quietly, spreading out over the continent. And of course, we can't ignore Australia's track record. Every time a new animal gets added, rabbits, foxes, cane toads, chaos follows. Even if vultures don't hunt live animals, they'd still shift the balance. It's hard to imagine vultures being as disastrous as cane toads, but less disastrous is not the same as a good idea. One overlooked angle. Vultures change how landscapes feel. In Africa or India, seeing a group of vultures circling in the distance is like nature's billboard. Something's dead over there. If they were introduced to Australia, the outback would suddenly have that same eerie look. It would feel different, less uniquely Australian, more like Africa's savannas. Whether that's good or bad depends on how you see it, but it'd be a massive shift in character. So would vultures thrive? Yes. Would they clean up carcasses faster and maybe prevent disease? Also, yes. But would they throw Australia's existing balance into chaos, pick fights with wedge-tailed eagles and starve out dingoes and goannas? Almost definitely. And if there's one thing Australia doesn't need, it's another invasive species messing with its ecosystems. But what do you think? Would vultures make Australia better, or would they just end up being the next cane toad story? 
that's all for today. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share it with your friends. You can also leave a comment with what you would like to see in the following videos. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.